there. We need to work on those transitions. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. We're live. We're live. Yay. Yeah, hey. we need the, the fade out. Yeah, we need to fade out of the music and the smooth transition to uh, the introduction of ourselves. Um, I am Jen with Tea for All Reasons. And I am Marsha. And we are excited to bring you another fun evening of tea and baking. Um, first off, I want to say happy anniversary to my mom and my dad. My dad's on camera. Um, they've been married 56 years. And so happy anniversary. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Great yeah. milestone. Yep. Great. Another great milestone. Yep. Yeah. And thanks for giving up your anniversary evening to do a Facebook Live. Yeah. That, with me. No problem. We went out last night. And we had a great, great dinner. And um, so no problem. Cool. Happy to do this. Excellent. Okay. So just want to let you know for right now, um, Molly is not here to monitor comments. Yeah. My kids are at a thing with the youth group at their church tonight. They're our church tonight. So it's just mom, dad, and me um, doing this show. So after we finish this intro bit, mom is going to be sitting at the computer monitoring the comments and questions. So if you have any questions at any point tonight, um, feel free to ask, and mom will get those to me. I, I might have to hold on receiving the questions yeah. and answering um, if I'm in the middle of doing something because I'm doing the baking demo and the tea demo. And yeah, I'm, and usually we kind of trade off. Like yeah. when she's doing something, I'll talk, and we're not going to be able to do that tonight. So, no, no yeah. it's all me. It's all Jen tonight. Um, and uh, and so the baking demo is a little bit complicated. We're doing choux pastry, pâte choux. Cream, it, traditionally known as cream puffs um, or eclairs. It's the same dough that's used for both. And I'm going to demonstrate how to make that. And hopefully they turn out. Oh, they will. Yeah, I practiced a couple weeks ago and they turned out. Yeah. So We've both made them and it's been years since I made them. But they're great because uh, they can be used for sweets or savories. Yep. They freeze well. Yep. And they hold up well yep. with a little bit of moisture in them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're they're a great tea. They're great for tea Goody. because they are versatile. Yeah. And you can make them whatever size you want. Right. You can make them as large as you want or as small. Um, we're going to show like a bite size, a little C bigger than bites. a couple bites yeah. that would be <clears throat> perfect for the tea table. Um, and uh, I'm going to also demonstrate a savory filling. Right. Um, we have a savory filling already made. Yep. And then I'm going to, so she did a chicken salad. We're not demonstrating the chicken salad, but I am demonstrating it's a roasted vegetable spread um, that's a filling for a tea sandwich. Yeah, we thought we would do, do one that had meat and one was maybe appropriate for vegetarian sure. or um, gluten-free or whatever. Well, the, the shoe pastry is not gluten-free. No, the gluten, that's true. However... Um, what, there was something else I was going to say about that. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Okay. Or vegan. Yeah, vegan. I'm not showing a vegan version, but um, you could do it vegan. I know what I was going to say. Profiteroles, Profiteroles yes. Profiteroles, yeah. Yep. The other thing I was going to say was that, and we always are asked this, the chicken tarragon salad is in my cookbook, but the shoe pastry and the carrot filling are not. No, but they will be posted at Food for All Reasons, right. which is our food blog, which we're trying to do better to post more often. Yeah. And um, Especially now that the cookbook is now that not the, for sale. Yeah, anymore. the cookbook is sold out. And um, although we are working on, we have figured out a possible solution for getting that cookbook available um, yeah. in the future, but it'll probably be next year. Yeah. It's going to take some time. Right. But um, but we are working on working getting on that it. cookbook available in a different format, um, again, so that those of you who haven't didn't get a chance to get that, you can get those recipes. But then also we are still talking about doing a new cookbook. Yeah, we are. As well. Yeah, we um, are. Gathering recipes. Lots lots of ideas swirling in our heads. Yes. When you've got two, it's double. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, even even hubby gets in on the idea. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Um, I have other things. I have other announcements, but I'm going to hold those. I'm going to start the baking demo and um, 
and then um, and I think other things to show you, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Um, but I will show you those um, later. Um, and the giveaway. There is a giveaway tonight, and I'm going to do the, well, I'll explain that later as well. So are you going to do that, like, on the second half after the break? Yeah. Okay. We're pretty sure we're going to do a break. Um, we never really talked about mapping No, we didn't, out. but we didn't probably after the major portion of the baking. Yeah. Then there'll be a break. Yeah. After the baking part, we'll do a break, and then I'll show you what I... Uh, what I want to show you and go through the other announcements and then we'll do the tea demo. Yeah, and then um, Yeah, okay. And it's gonna be a in. full evening. So yep. hang with us. Yep, and uh, it's gonna be it's really gonna be great. Yep. Okay. All right So okay. I'm heading so over to mom is going over the comments yeah. and so she'll monitor those and then Dad is coming with me and the camera over to the strawberry. And the thing also, tell them that um, all the comments may not be answered by right today. Yeah, the, yeah, if you have questions, um, it, they'll, there will be a slight delay on uh, answering questions because Mom is way over there. She's way over there on the other side of the kitchen. Wave your hand. Yeah, there, there we go. Um, okay, so the recipe that I'm using for the pot of choux um, is out of the Baking with Julia cookbook that um, is by Dory Greenspan. So this goes back to the 90s, I think, when Julia Child had a, a show on PBS that was Baking with Julia where she would bring in renowned chefs and they would cook together in her kitchen and, and bake fabulous things. Um, but I... Um, I love her shoe pastry recipe and this book is great because it has very detailed instructions. And so this is adapted from this book that I'm now going to move out of the way. Um, and like I said, I am going to post this recipe at Food for All Reasons probably tomorrow and, um, uh, and so you'll be able to get that there. Okay, so I already prepared our ingredients and um, I brought them with me and that's why they're in, in mason jars. Um, so the liquid is half a cup of whole milk and a half a cup of water. And I'm going to pour that into our saucepan. And then we're going to take seven tablespoons of butter and that's also going into the saucepan and I'm going to turn this on like medium high heat and I have it cut up into small pieces because it will melt faster and we only need seven tablespoons um, stuck together there we go so I'm going to put all seven in There we go. In the milk water mixture, and you're going to bring this to a boil. And that'll take a while because this is an electric stove. Put this over here. <clears throat> okay. So you're going to bring your liquid and the butter to a boil. The butter needs to be completely melted into the milk and the water. And then, um, and then it actually, like, the little tiny bubbles that you get around the side and when we get to that point I'll have dad bring the camera down to show you. Um, that's not the boil. It has to actually all be bubbling um, to be considered a full boil. And that's very important. Then once that comes up to the boil you're going to add your dry ingredients and your dry ingredients are a cup and a half of all-purpose flour and, and they're mixed in this jar together. So it's a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. Um, and that butter is unsalted, by the way, because um, you might end up with too much salt if you use salted butter. So anytime you're baking, I recommend that you use unsalted butter. That way you have more control over the salt content um, in your baked good. So you can see the butter is melting. It's going to be a while, a little while until this comes up to the boil. 
But you can see the, I don't know if you can see on camera, the tiny little bubbles around the edge. Um, that's not the boil. You're going to have bigger bubbles throughout the liquid that will be your full boil. Once it comes up to the full boil, you're going to put all of these dry ingredients, you're dumping the whole thing in to the liquid and you're taking it off the heat. Um, and you're, oh no, you keep it on the heat. And you're going to stir it until it comes together into a ball over the heat. Um, and then um, once it comes together into a ball, and I'll, this will make more sense once we actually do it because we can show you. Then it's going to dry out a little bit um, and it'll leave kind of a crust in the bottom of the pan. You want to cook that flour a little bit. Um, so you don't have that raw flour flavor in your dough. Um, it'll make sense when you see what we're doing. It's getting close. The butter is not completely melted yet. We're getting close. It takes a little time. Um, anyway, once you get that crust or like scale on the bottom of the pan, then you take it off the heat. Um, because you know that the flour is cooked. But I'll, I'll show, it'll make more sense when you see it. Any questions yet? No. Nope? Okay. Okay. Um, and according to the instructions, it's about from when you put the flour in and it comes together to a ball, you're going to keep it on the heat for 30 to 60 seconds um, to to cook that raw flour flavor out. Okay, it's steaming. You, I can smell it. You definitely have the bubbles around the edge are increasing. And at this point, we're just waiting for it to come up to a full boil. Oh, and before we started this, I did put the oven on at 400, 400 Fahrenheit. And I also have my racks so that they cut the oven into thirds. Um, hopefully that makes sense. You'll see it when I put the um, pans in the oven. But you do want to preheat your oven to 400. Okay, now we're at a boil. You can see it bubbling. The steam's not in the way, right? Mm -hmm. eh -eh. But we got a good boil, so I'm pouring the whole... Yep, got it all in there. And then you just stir, stir, stir. It's weird. Keep stirring until it comes together in a ball. And I'm going to turn this heat down a little bit. Oh. There we go. There we go. And you can see. Just keep stirring. My bracelet got caught on the spoon. All right, I still see little dry patches of flour mixed in, so I'm gonna keep working it. Turn that heat off because this is an electric oven or stove that cooktop stays hot longer. If you're on gas. Um, Keep, keep the heat on until you know you've cooked that all through. All right, I think we're good. But here, you can see that scale in the bottom of the, see that? That's, that's what you're looking for. That. Okay. So here's your weird dough ball. Milk. Get that flour mixed in there really well. Ugh. You want a really good heavy duty wooden spoon because this stuff gets stiff. Okay, all right. So now that we've got our good pastry dough, we're not done yet. <laughs> now we're gonna, so I'm gonna show you the mixer method. It used to be old school. Mom and I were laughing about this. Old school, you then add your eggs and we have six eggs. You would add your eggs one at a time. 
Um, and old school, like when I was in culinary school, they made us do everything by hand, and you would be mixing in those eggs by hand with a wooden spoon, and that is a lot. It's a lot of work. And so I think that's why a lot of people don't make shoe pastry. But you can use your mixer with the paddle attachment. Now, if you don't have a KitchenAid with a paddle attachment, you can use a regular hand mixer, but you want to be really careful not to overmix or, or use too high a speed, or you're going to end up with putting too much air into your dough. You want to do it on low speed um, with your hand mixer. All right, so I'm just putting this in the mixer bowl. Watch out for the cords there, Dad. All right. And you want to work with it while it's hot. Okay, so I'm going to put the paddle in. And this one comes up like this. And I'm going to put it on low. And you, you add one egg at a time and mix it completely so that it's completely incorporated before you add the next egg. And at first it looks really weird and kind of greasy, and but it's not. And then we'll add our next egg. And after I add the third egg, then I'll scrape down the sides a little bit. So that that all gets mixed in really well. Why do the eggs Um, because those are the instructions. I have no idea. No, it just, um, it helps them to incorporate properly. Um, you're working with a really warm dough, and um, I, I, I honestly don't know. My assumption is it just helps it to mix well. Um, yeah, I can't get there. All right, I'm scraping the sides because a lot of this dough is stuck on the sides. forget. Mom's mixer is different from mine. After we add the fifth egg, I'm going to check the dough and make sure that it looks right. Um, it's going to, it's hard to explain. We'll take a look and see how it looks. If it looks dry enough, then I might not add the sixth egg. When I made this two weeks ago, I needed all six eggs. I have a feeling we'll need all six tonight too. All right, I'm going to scrape. You can see how the dough is coming together. It's getting kind of a creamy, creamier look to it. It's going to be glossy and um, it's an it's a nice dough to work with. All right, let's see. There we go. Get off. There we go. All right, bring this back up. You can see 
it's starting to come together, I feel like we're going to need that sixth egg. Alright, I'm going to scrape some of this out of the paddle. Okay, so what I'm looking for, and I don't know if you can see it, I'm looking for the stretch. And at what point does it break in the stretch? And does it stand up? And we're not quite there, so I am going to add that other egg. Hopefully that all makes sense, but... I'm going to add this, oh yeah, I keep forgetting, it's different from my mixer. Alright, so we're going to add that last egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, that, that'll take a couple more minutes. Sometimes it works to get that off the paddle. All right, this is the challenging part. Okay, you can come back around the. Must be back over here. All right, so I'm gonna scrape all of this off of the paddle, and it it's sticky, but it doesn't stick too much to the paddle. It actually comes off pretty well. Um, it sticks to itself. You got a question? All right, hold on. I will come get the question in just a second. All right, that's... If I was at home, I would get every bit off of that, but... That's good. All right, I'm going to give this one pretty good stir. I want to get all of this off of the sides. All right. So you can see it's a pretty goopy, sticky mess. It's not a mess. It's delicious. Um, but it, it's got stretch and... Um, that looks pretty good, and you can kind of see it's a little bit glossy. All right. Question. Okay. Can this dough be frozen? No, it cannot. You have you have to work with this dough when it's warm. Um, that is the most important instruction that I uh, noticed in uh, the in, in that cookbook is that this dough you have to work with it right away. You can freeze the puffs after they've baked. Um, but you have to work with this dough when it's warm. Okay, so I'm going to show you, this, this is where a lot of folks, you lose a lot of folks, because these get piped, using a pastry bag. Um, I thought about bringing my old school actual cloth pastry bag to show that. Well, I won't use it. But I decided I would show the disposable kind because that's what I use anyway. So I take these. Now, I am going to use a piping tip, but you don't have to. You can just cut off the end and use the, these. Um, I got these on Amazon. You can get them on Amazon or um, a craft store, I think, has piping bags. Some uh, grocery stores might have them. Um, but I take, so I take it and I, I don't cut it off until the end, but yeah, I, Michael, Michael's Target. yeah, Michael's Target, 
Anywhere that has baking supplies for like cake decorating, that's where you're going to find these. Um, but I fold a cuff. Yeah. I, and it, they're, they make a lot of noise. So I fold down a cuff so that I can hold it. Um, and I, I fold it down pretty, pretty well. I want a pretty good sized cuff. That's going to make it stable for me. And now I am going to use a piping tip. This is a very large, very large piping tip. Sorry, you all right? With a plain, plain hole, but um, plain tip, rather. You can, uh, I don't know what happened to the other. Oh, my mom's going to demonstrate. Well, you can't see it. Um, we're going to show one that has a fluted tip that will give a more decorative um, pipe. But I'm just using plain. And I dump it down in there. To as far as it will go. I'm going to cut this off after I fill the bag. So now I'm going to fill the bag and I just use this spatula. So I'm going to set this down while I gather up as much as I can with this spatula. And it's, it's a challenge because it's going to fall off. And then I try to get the spatula as far down in the bag as I can. And then I use the bag to... If I had known that was going to happen, I wouldn't have chosen this spatula. And then I actually used the spatula to pull the dough off. Hopefully you can see that. The fact that the head of that spatula comes off is not ideal. If you have one that has a removable head, then don't use that one. Is this one? All of my mothers have removable, so I'll just stick with what I got. Maybe a spoon? No, I'll just stick with this. Anyway, I... No, nope, you do it right away. Well, you know, no resting. It's got to be warm. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You, you, um, oh, my gosh. Okay. All right. All right, let me get more. All right, I'm not going to be able to get all of this in the one bag. Uh oh. The fact that this spatula head comes off is throwing me off. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. Okay, it looks like a mess. So now I'm going to actually kind of pleat the top here before I twist it. I'm going to pleat it to kind of close it off and then I'm going to push the dough that's up by the top down and as I do that I twist to kind of close it off. I want to get the air out and I'm not going to get all the air out until I cut this off but I want to try to push as much of that dough down as I can and I'm there. Now take some scissors and I use kitchen scissors and I basically just take the scissors and score I usually score around it and then it push the tip through so that you've got metal but you don't want to do it way up you want to be pretty close to the the bottom of the tip right and now I can start piping my dough now, there's a big air bubble in there, but I'm going to use that to my advantage. So you can see that's coming out. I'm going to do this pan first. All right, so now, and I'm not great at piping, so I'm not going to look as professional as Julia does when she does it or even any other pastry chef, but I'll move this out of the way. Okay, so I want to do... Um, I think my instructions say to do a quarter size dollop. I'm gonna, it might be a little bit bigger than a quarter, but you're basically going to bring your piping bag down onto the parchment. And I, it's parchment lined paper, I mean parchment lined sheet pan, like a cookie sheet, and you just squeeze. And you can do them about an inch apart because they're not going to spread. And that's not an inch, but we'll do this one a little further. 
and you kind of turn the tip to release and you are going to end up with a point on the top but I'm going to show you how to fix that and you squeeze your bag from the top and I just keep twisting it down as I go and I'll do this one here now I will, Dad was asking if I was going to show eclairs, so the eclairs are the tubes, and so I will do a tube. Which looks weird, looks like a worm when you first do it. Oops. So there we've hit our air pocket, that's okay. Nope, oh, we had air on that one too. So I've continued to twist as I've gone down and used my pastry. Okay. Oopsie. If I can get another one out of here. Alright, I'm going to call that one done. Now, because this is a disposable bag, I'm actually going to cut. I'm not going to try to refill this bag. I'm going to cut that to get the tip out. I'm going to reuse that and then I can throw this away. This is why I like the disposable ones. And then now I'm going to move on to a new bag. But before I show you that, Mom suggested that we show you how to uh, scoop as well. So she's got a scooper. Um, you can find this in a bakery, like a good kitchen shop that has a, a stuff like, like Bed Bath & Beyond um, would be a good place to find this. This is a, does it have the size? I don't see a size on it, but this is probably inch and a half diameter. Yeah, Pampered Chef. Pampered Chef? Oh, okay, Pampered Chef. I don't, I don't usually buy from Pampered Chef. And they have all different sizes. They do, yeah. She has a tiny one, but we're showing this this one is larger than a quarter. Yeah, so mine are larger than quarters, if you look. So your mileage may vary on that. Anyway, so I'm going to show how to do the scoop. Do I need to grease this first, or do you think it's going to come out? I was thinking out? maybe yes, spray. Well, okay. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to grease the inside of this with a little bit of cooking spray. So I sprayed the inside because I want to make sure this comes out. But what's great about this is you can, if this works for me, you can get uniform little dollops. From your scoop. And Mom, you've said you've made them this way? You've done the scoop method? Yep, there's a delay yep, on that. I've She's... also done it with just a spoon. Yep, so I'm going to show that next. Um, let's use that. 
so the other way you can do it if you don't want to pipe or you don't want to you don't want to buy a, a scoop is you can just use a spoon so I just have a regular tablespoon and I've got about the same size dollop in the spoon and then you push it off of the spoon with another spoon that might end up weird I have never actually used this method I, I use the piping bag every time that I've made them it's a pretty forgiving dough so when I made um, the puffs a couple weeks ago and we're gonna show you those um, later um, I didn't have the proper size tip for the piping bag and so they ended up swirly um, and uh, they looked kind of odd but uh, then I went to the piping bag without the tip and then later I bought the big tip that I needed so um, so with this pan now I'm gonna finish it off so you want to do an egg wash so it's one egg and there's one tablespoon of water in with this egg and you just mix it up and then take a pastry brush and if you have a silicone brush you can do that too I just like the traditional pastry brush and this is actually just a paintbrush um, you can buy a regular paintbrush from a hardware store wash it before you use it on food but this is how you take care of those tips you just kinda push it down with the, the brush um, push that pointy edge down but then you're also kind of patting it with that egg wash and that's gonna give you nice shine as they cook but you can the dough is pretty forgiving so you can actually pretty much reshape it using this brush which is what I'm gonna do with that one I may have put these a little too close together we'll see if they end up this one. So I'm going to fix that funky dot there. So I'm going to that's the one where I had that air bubble. And like I said, the dough is pretty forgiving. And easy to work with. All right. Okay, these were the scooped ones. Do you want me to take the time to do the rest of the dough here? No? Not worry about it? Okay. All right. Okay, so... What? Do it during the break. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the oven. So remember, our oven is 400. I'm going to put it on the middle rack. But this is what I was talking about, splitting your oven into thirds. If I had done the rest of the dough, it would be on the second pan, which would go on that top rack. And then after about 10 minutes, um, we would flip them to the other rack. And then also after 10 minutes, we're going to reduce the heat to 350. And then um, cook them for an additional 5 to 7 minutes. So... Um, this down wipe down the counter real quick since I had egg on there um, so in about five minutes we'll reduce the heat I'm not going to switch that pan because it's just the one pan and then um, and then we'll check them to see how they're doing um, at 
after the five minutes after they've you've reduced the heat, you're going to check them to make sure they're done. You just pick one up and kind of tap it on the bottom to see if it's hollow inside. If it's hollow, if you feel like it's hollow inside, um, then they're done. If not, give them another two minutes and check them. Um, so for the next 10 minutes, I can talk about our giveaway. How about that? Do you have a question? These questions? No? Uh, do you preheat oven for... Preheat the oven for at least a half an hour. It seems like a really long time, but you want to make sure that your oven is actually at the proper temperature. When it beeps, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily stabilized at the proper temperature. And Mom explained this a couple months ago. Um, the, the modern oven, what it does is it pops up to a really high heat to bring your oven up to temperature. And then it'll drop and come up and drop and come up until it hits the where it needs to be. It will beep when it thinks it's at whatever temperature you want. But it's not fully settled at that temperature yet. It's just that's the first time that it's hit that temperature. But it's going to go up again, and it's going to come down again and stabilize a little bit. And so the oven expert that my mom talked to when he was fixing their oven said, let it preheat for a good half an hour, and then you know that your oven is at temperature. So don't assume that it's ready to go when you hear that initial beep that it's hit temperature. You probably want to give it another 15 minutes after that, right? When you say about 15 minutes, my dad's nodding. My mom will nod in a minute when she catches up. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, she, she's nodding. Yes. Okay, so the <laughs> there's that delay, right? <laughs> okay, so the giveaway, so I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to demonstrate this tea, but I have a new tea that I listed in the shop uh, maybe two days ago um, for this season, and it's the giveaway for tonight. Um, I had a huge wholesale order this week and there was absolutely no way that I could get a sampler packaged and the reality is the giveaway is not even packaged yet but it's going to be a three ounce tin which will look like this um, but this tin is actually empty because I forgot to package it before I came over today because my week has been crazy because um, I packaged a lot for this wholesale order it was 102 ounce bags and um, What's 48 and 36 of four ounce? That's a, that's a lot. And then some bulk tea as well for this the wholesale customer. And, yeah, so I packaged a lot this week. Um, and uh, so I just forgot to package this. But anyway, so I'm going to demonstrate this later. And, but I'll show you now. Dad will need to get on the camera. Um, this is a new tea. It's called Apple Almond Black. It's a black tea, apple and almond. It's roasted almonds and apples, and it's got raisins in it, and it's absolutely delicious. I posted in the group, um, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks ago that I was sampling this um, and for consideration in the shop, and it was so good that I immediately called my vendor and said, please send me some of this. And so apple almond black, and I am going to demonstrate it later when I do the teas. But that is the giveaway for tonight, and it is the three ounce tin of the apple almond. And the key phrase for the giveaway is apple tin. All one word, apple tin um, for the giveaway, if you're interested in that. And... Um, as usual, I will go through all the comments tomorrow after church, and sometime in the afternoon, Molly and I will do the drawing, and I'll post it here on the page, and also in the Tea for All Reasons group on Facebook, and um, we'll announce the winner. My mom's laughing, so I don't know at what what point she's laughing from what I said, but um, so that's the giveaway. Apple tin in the comments, and. Appleton, Appleton, Appleton. Oh, I know. That, I know. It's like, poof. Every, everybody in the comments, yeah, it's crazy. That's what, you know what it is? When I go through the comments the next day, I know when 
the announced yeah when I've made the announcement because I go I see every single comment that you guys put in the when we're doing the live. Um, I know when I've mentioned the giveaway because that's when all the comments come with the keyword. It's great. Um, and then again at the end, it, I get a little flurry of extras at the end too. It's great. Um, okay, I'll do these announcements because we've got a few minutes. So the, uh, the Advent Calendar tea boxes are still available for pre-order. Um, they're on target for shipping out starting November 10th. And, um, and I, I had said this before, as the orders come in, that's how they're going to ship out. So if you were one of the first ones to order, yours will be one of the first ones to go out. So it's it, FIFO, first in, first out, is how it's working. Um, and so, uh, but I am on track for getting those tea boxes out starting November 10th. Um, and... Uh, the Hanukkah tea boxes are available in the shop, and it's about the same time frame. Um, Hanukkah starts December 7th, which is a week after Advent starts, which is December 1st. Um, but, I'm, but I'm aiming to ship those out in the same time frame, the November 10th, 11th, um, for anyone who pre-orders those now. And, um, and then the 12 days of Christmas will be listed in November because 12 days of Christmas doesn't start until Christmas Day. And so I want to push out, I want to try to push out the Advent and the Hanukkah for a couple of weeks before I list the 12 days of Christmas. Um, and so those, the 12 days of Christmas will be listed by November 1st. So it's just a couple weeks. Um, or the first week of November, I should say. Uh, if you're interested in those. And the shipping time frame on those is um, to ensure that you receive those well before Christmas. Um, and, and like always, if it's a gift for somebody, you want it shipped directly to that person, just put their information in the shipping to uh, during checkout, and I will ship it directly to them. And I think that's it on that. Um, on the quilted advent calendars, I do have them, and they are listed in the shop. I'm going to show you the new ones uh, later, after our break. Hanukkah starts December 18th. Oh, is it the 18th? Why do I have the 7th? Okay, well, Hanukkah boxes... Okay, Hanukkah is the 18th. I don't know why I have the 7th in my head. Okay, well, that's even better. Um, but you'll get your Hanukkah boxes well before Hanukkah starts. Um, anyway, the quilted wall hangings for 2022 are available in the shop. They're listed. Um, limited quantities, I have eight total, but they're in different, so my my quilter was amazing and she used different combinations of fabrics on the border and the back, and so um, it's not just two listings f for what the front piece looks like. Um, but I'll, I'm gonna show you those after our break. The 2021 quilted wall hanging and advent wall hangings are uh, relisted in the shop and they are actually discounted right now. Um, and it was, the, there are only two styles left from last year's, the red snowflakes and the red teacups. And so those are available in the shop right now and at a discount. And so if you were looking at one of those, now's the time to get it. And I think that's it for those announcements. And um, I'm going to check on these, and then after I check on these, I'm going to show you the filling, and then we'll do the break, and we'll show the, yeah, I'm, I'm letting my dad know for camera purposes. So, and, and for you guys too. So I'm going to show you that the roasted vegetable filling that's going to go in the puffs um, as soon as these come out of the oven, because they need to cool. And then, um, and then we'll take a short little break, and then after the break, I'll show you the, the new quilted wall hangings for the advent, and then do the tea demo. Right? Okay. I'm going to check on these. I'll close, close my mama's cabinet. Okay, these are not done, right, obviously, but that was the 10 minute mark, and so I'm going to reduce the temperature to 350. And then I'm going to put the timer on for five minutes. Okay. And while we do that, I will work on the 
move this over here. The filling. Okay, so bring all my accoutrement over here. Okay, so the base for this filling is cream cheese, which seems pretty standard in a lot of tea sandwiches. And so this is a whole block of cream cheese, eight ounces, that has been softened to room temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my bowl. This is not the low fat cream cheese, this is full fat cream cheese. But if you are looking to watch your calories, feel free to buy the low fat version. Just don't invite me over. I know, right? The full fat's the good stuff. Okay. All right. So the cream cheese is in the bowl. You want a pretty good wooden spoon because you're going to mix this by hand. I don't recommend using a mixer to mix this, and you'll see why. Although you probably could, and it would be faster, but you want to be careful. So this is a roasted vegetable tea sandwich filling, and so I actually roasted the vegetables um, the other day, and um, the other like a week ago, two weeks ago actually, and I froze them until today. Can you smell them? It smells really good. Um, and uh, I thawed them today for use today. Uh, so this for sure can go in the freezer. And I would say even once you mix it into the cream cheese, you might be able to freeze it. Although I don't think cream cheese freezes very well, but you could, you could try it. So what this is, is one cup of carrots sliced about a quarter inch thick. Uh, one cup each of red, uh, and I use orange bell pepper. You could also use red and yellow or some combination of the three. Don't use green. You don't want the green bell pepper. You want the red, orange, and or yellow in a smallish dice. And so you can see, well, that's a carrot in the pepper. So you can see the size of the, I, that's about the size. And then I used red onion that I cut in half and then sliced thinly. Um, and then, uh, and so put your chopped vegetables in a bowl and then drizzle with about one to two tablespoons of olive oil. I used avocado oil. Um, I recommend either one of those two. Um, over canola oil. They're healthier oils and um, I think they just taste better. Um, and then one to two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. But you could use whatever seasoning you want. You could do a Greek seasoning. You could do any, any seasoning that you want. But I used Italian seasoning. And then about a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. You could use table salt. Um, and uh, mix those together in your bowl until they're well coated, all the vegetables are pretty well coated with the vegetables, and then you're going to roast them on a sheet pan in a uh, 425 degree oven for about a half an hour. Um, and you're going to look at it and you know, you're going to eyeball it. You want your carrots to be soft and you want your onions to have caramelized a little bit and actually you want the, you know, everything to look it's, it's going to look like this, basically, when it comes out of your oven. Um, but you're going to use a sheet pan, and you're going to lay it out flat so that everything is pretty well spaced out. And then let it cool. If you're going to use the vegetables same day, you want to do this in the morning, you know, and then let it cool. Because then you're going to chop the onions or the, the vegetables smaller to go in your cream cheese mixture. So I just rough chop, so I put it in a pile basically and your hands might get dirty but you just rough chop. Oops! No fugitives. And I just take the blade of my knife across all my vegetables. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully my hands not covering it in the way. But you want to get, you still want some good sized pieces but you want them smaller than they were. All right. 
I'm going to use that. And our timer's going, so we're going to change and come over here and take a look at our shoe. See how they look. Nope, they're still not done. So they should be a good golden brown, and they're not. I'm actually going to put, I'm going to move them up to the top rack. Yeah, they're not done. Okay. We'll give it two, but I, they may take longer. Okay, so I'm still rough chopping vegetables. And I just turn my knife different directions until this is all chopped pretty evenly because you don't want big gigantic pieces in yeah like these peppers okay I feel like that's pretty good it smells really good. I wish I say we say this all the time, which we had smell a vision. Okay, then we're gonna dump these vegetables into well that was fast two minutes. Into the cream cheese mixture. Now this recipe is adapted from a recipe I found in Tea Time magazine. Um, and this will be listed at the Food for All Reasons blog. Right, I'm going to pick this up. It's a little easier to manhandle. Oh, that smells so good. Just mix it in with to that cream cheese really well. Now I'm using this as a sandwich spread, but I think this would also work on. Um, I had the. I was trying to think of other ways this could be used. I thought it could be used on a cracker platter or a charcuterie board. Still not done. Let me get that time off. Nope. They're close though. I'm surprised they're not more golden brown. That's gonna be a fast minute. Anyway, I like I was saying, I um I think this could work with crackers, charcuterie board, um as an appetizer with baguette. Um, pretty versatile. But we're going to use this as a tea sandwich filling. You could put it on regular bread for a tea sandwich too. But there you go. That looks pretty delicious. Creamy and awesome. And so in a bit, I'm going to show this, putting, putting these in the puffs. Now, I brought some of the puffs that, we had pre that I had pre-made um, since they're cooled. Checking the oven again. Okay, well, I mean... Huh? Yeah, I'm just hot. I just broke some off. Hold on. No, no. That made it go down further. Meanwhile, we're losing heat in our oven. I'll eat that one. Okay. I mean, it's fine. 
I'm going to give them one more minute. They're pro they probably are done, but it's weird that they're not darker. I seem to recall mine took 25 minutes. Okay. I guess my oven is hotter. Because mine worked exactly like the recipe. So that's kind of weird. Yeah. All right. Well, in, the, in any case, I'm going to bring this. Well, no, I'll put those there. I'm going to bring this over here. And I'll fill. So my mom pre-filled the chicken salad. So you can see, mm, so delicious. They look great with the chicken salad. Now these were the ones that I made at home a couple weeks ago and you can see they're significantly darker than what we've got in um, mom's oven right now. So you just slice it open so you can see it puffed up. Just slice it open and you'll see there's a pocket in there. Right? And that's where we're going to put our filling. All right, let me check again. Okay, two more minutes. Okay, they're getting there. Okay, but like I said, there's a pocket in there, and so I'm just going to take some of this filling and pop it in there. Now I'm just using this little spatula. You can use a spoon. You can use a piping bag, although this one might be a little challenging with a piping bag or a knife. But give it a pretty good generous amount of filling and then you've got your cute little tea sandwich. And again you can see it's got the pocket in there. That's a little too much for that one. Somebody asked, you don't have to take any of the inside out before you put the pan Nope, in? nope. They, they come with the hole. If you bake them properly, if, if, they, if they worked like they're supposed to, there will be a naturally occurring hole inside. That's why when you tap on the bottom, they should feel hollow. But if you notice, I'm not taking anything out. I'm just slicing into it. Now I kind of broke that one. But you can see there's a cavity in there um, that naturally occurs because of the, the way this pastry works. This is what this pastry is designed to do, is to create that hole so that you can fill it. Now with a classic, that came off, with a classic cream puff, Typically, you're going to take your piping bag with cream, and, and mom is going to demonstrate that, and you just poke it, poke it in and push the cream in there without slicing it. But for a sandwich, it's a heartier filling, and so you, you do want to slice. Yeah, almost. No, they still feel a little dense. Okay. Ow, hot. More? I don't know if that did right. Yeah, you can see the back. Maybe I'd turn this. Yep. Yeah, because the back ones look better. So we'll rotate that for a couple more minutes. Two more minutes. And... Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave these three. Mom has a cream um, filling that she's going to demonstrate um, after the break. We'll give her a break from the comments and she can come do that demonstration and we'll fill those. So that's the roasted vegetable tea sandwich filling and I hope you guys will try it um, because it's fabulous. Tastes delicious. And like I said, this is going to be the recipe for this and for the shoe pastry. Both recipes will be posted at foodforallreasons.com probably tomorrow sometime in the afternoon.
And that's those. Oh, she once opened, does the tea keep better in the bags or tins? Um, it doesn't matter. So uh, the this is a question about the, the tea. Um, the, the bags have a Ziploc. Um, the tins do not. Uh, but the tin lid, I'll bring it over. The tin lid is pretty, pretty secure. It's not a screw top or anything, but it's a pretty tight fit. And so as long as you've got that tin lid on there tightly, um, it's going to be airtight. I also, just so you know, I package the tea in bags with a twist tie inside the tin. So the tea's not loose in the tin when you receive it. Now you're free to dump it in there. I pour it out of the bag that it comes in and put it in there. But it's in a cello bag with a twist tie inside the tin when you receive it. Um, and then, like I said, the, the bags, the two ounce, four ounce bags have a zip top. Um, and so um, either one keeps the tea fresh as long as you keep them pretty tightly closed. All right, so let's check these one more time. I'm taking them out regardless. Yeah, 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 I think we're done. My mom's oven is so nice and clean compared to mine. Mine is very dirty. Okay, so I think these are done. Yeah. So I'm gonna put these on the cooling rack because that's hot. And yes, we're gonna take a break. Turn the oven off, turn the light off. Okay, so we're gonna take a, let's say eight minute break, seven minute break, however it works out. My phone. Uh, we'll come back at 8.15 on the dot because that's easier than trying to save five minutes. At, and um, so we'll come back at 8.15 and we'll do the tea demo and I'll show off the quilted wall hangings and mom will show off the cream puffs. Right? One more question before we go? I can wait? Okay. So we will, I can get the music to start. There we go. We'll be right back.
we're coming back. We're back. I'm getting the music. Okay. All right. Welcome back. Hopefully you had a chance to visit the ladies, gentlemen, get some water, um, stand up, because that was that was an hour. Yeah, that was an hour. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, make sure your oven is hot. Um, our, these didn't turn out right, and part of it was I kept opening the oven, and you lose temperature every time you open that oven, and um, yeah, that added to the cooking time. That yeah, and so reduce the heat. Reduce the heat adds to the cooking time. So those actually did not finish completely properly. Um, sadly, a couple of them did, but um, they yeah. they didn't work perfectly. Well, we're really glad that we have you know yeah at least the ones I did the ones that uh, from home turned yeah. out right yeah um, before we go in there mom's gonna fill these with the cream um, so you need to come yeah, around come around yeah do it right there you want me to do it here yeah do it right there I'll take that yep and give you your cream alright okay. so so no one's monitoring questions right now yeah so just well, um, or I can okay oh, okay alright Okay. Well, one of the things that Jen and I um, talked about earlier was our, you know, we have kind of different methods that we use for baking, and um, and neither is right over the other. Um, she had her method of holding the bag to fill it, and this is what I've always done: is um, I'll put the bag over a glass, and that way it's stable. And this is great for a filling that is um, thicker um, or for frosting or for something that you're going to drizzle like the candy melts or something that are really liquidy um, it's great because they'll pour right into this and you're not holding it so that's that's the method that I use and so this is what I'll do today so I've already whipped the whipping cream this is what I'm going to fill these last three cream puffs with and I added a little bit of lemon curd just to give it a, a, another layer of flavor and uh, and then we can drizzle, you can drizzle whatever you want to over the top, but I'm going to drizzle a little bit of chocolate. So this is just super easy. And I won't take the time to put it all in there now, although I may go ahead and do that because I think I'm going to fill some of these other cream puffs. So let's go ahead and get it all in there. Okay. And then pretty much the same thing that Jen did. You want to try to get that all down to the bottom without any air holes if you can. And then kind of fold it at the top, pleat it at the top and then start twisting. So you really don't, if, if at all possible, you don't want to fill it too full because then it, it's a real pain when you start to get it to come up at the top and um, so don't don't fill it too full. Okay, so we're going to continue to twist. See, I can see some air holes in there. Get it nice and tight, and then just as Jen did, um, I'm going to cut that off, and then you're going to pipe it out. You can do a little test. Okay, now I want to get this into my right hand. Do it with my right hand. Okay, so I did already cut this one, and this is just super easy. Just pipe it right in there. You can pipe it as full as you want. like that. Just poke that in there. Okay. Turn that that way. And then this one, I'm just going to show you how you can poke poke a hole right like that and just pipe it in. And just fill it up like that. Now, I used um, 
whipping cream, but you can also make a pastry cream for this, you know, a good um, quality pastry cream, which is usually what an eclair or something is, is filled with, um, but you don't have to, just a nice whipping cream is, uh, and as I said, I added a little bit of lemon curd. You could add a little bit of um, orange curd. I think orange would be really good, especially in combination with the chocolate. Now, I wouldn't normally, I think I would probably use a ganache or something instead of this, because this is going to be a little runnier, but this is all I had today, so I'm just going to try to be careful and not, not drizzle too much. No such thing as too much chocolate. <laughs> but this is probably what most people have on hand is the good old Hershey's chocolate. So there you are. There's a sweet treat with the, um, the cream puff. So now the other good thing about this is that someone may ask, can you freeze whipped cream? I do it... Um, I do it to, because I, I try to be resourceful if I have leftovers. And so you can, before you put the chocolate on, you can wrap them. I probably, I probably would wrap them individually in a little plastic bag and then put them into a cookie tin or into another baggie, um, probably a cookie tin because you've got some cream that's sticking out. Probably what I would do first, hand, first off is I would put them on a cookie sheet and put them in the freezer and let them freeze maybe 30 minutes or so and then take them off and then put them in the bags or in the cookie tin at that point. Um, and they'll keep for a while, I would say maybe for a month or so. Take them out, let them defrost, and then drizzle with your chocolate. Um, another neat thing to do if you don't have any of the cream puffs left is you can do the same thing with the whipped cream is just pipe the whipped cream onto a cookie sheet into dollops much like your cream puffs and let them freeze for about 30 minutes and then just take a spatula underneath and then put them into a, a baggie or a refrigerator container or a freezer container or something like that and they'll keep again about a month I wouldn't do it much beyond that but that's another resourceful way to use up the rest of your whipping cream. Okay? I think that's it. Okay. So Jen's got some pretty she's going to show you. Okay. Yep. So come with me into the dining room. So we'll start with the table topper, which is... Um, okay, so this... Mom, you might have to talk about this. Oh, right. Um, this is, my mom made it, and it is, I just need the dimensions. Yeah, it's the newest thing uh, that I just put in the Etsy shop. It's 54 by 54, and it's just a beautiful fabric. Um, it has, a, like, a self-lining on it. I didn't need to line it. I just um, hemmed it and, and did the decorative stitching, and it's just beautiful. We were thinking about how beautiful it is for this time of year. Mm -hmm. So that's in the yep. Etsy shop. It's in, yeah, vintage, vintage for, shop. yeah, fi vintage for all reasons dot Etsy dot com. Yeah. Yep, that's mom's shop. Okay, that's all we have for mom. Okay, watch out. I can't lose these sticky notes. <laughs> these sticky notes are very, very important. Okay, I'm going to move over here because, no, no, you come over here. Okay, okay, this works. All right. Okay, so I'm going to show, so you can see I have them spread out, and that's because there are multiple types because of, okay, that's three, because of the back and the border fabric. So these are the 2002 quilted wall hangings. Like I said earlier, they're available in the shop. Um, this is called London Christmas, um, number one. And uh, there's only one of this particular one. This one has what I call snowy boughs, because it looks like snowy pine tree with Christmas ornaments on it. Um, the snowy boughs, backing fabric, and the, the um, black border. And so there's only one of this particular version of the London Christmas. And so this is London number one. Get rid of that. 
Okay, and then this one is London number two. I'll turn it around so you don't have to move. London number two, same front, <coughs> but the back is this fun London themed fabric, which is also the border, and it's the same border that's on London one. But that's the back fabric on that one. And there are two of these. And this is London number two, London Christmas number two. All right. And then this one is London Christmas number three. And there's only one of these. This one also has the snowy boughs background. But you can see the border. I think I called it Christmas gold or something like that um, on the border. Um, and it, th there's only one of this version um, in the shop. And the, this is at tforallreasons.com. The quilted advent wall hanging. Um, London Christmas number three. All right, here, let's pick that up. Okay, because I'm going to put those together. Okay, and then here, you can come around because this is taller. Okay, and then this type is Merry Christmas, um, number one. There's only one of these. These are different from the previous one. So the previous one has 24 pockets. This one has a 25th pocket. Um, now the Advent Tea Calendar Box only has 24 tea, pocket, tea packets. Um, and these are big enough for the tea packets, these pockets. Um, so you can put something else, like this says candy canes, um, in the 25th slot. But there is no tea packet for the 25th slot in this particular wall hanging. But this one is called Merry Christmas, number one, and it's got holly, a holly background and border. So the border is the holly. And this is Merry Christmas, number one. Oh, and the back of these have little plastic rings for hanging. Um, you can use a 3M hook, one of those 3M hooks, temporary command strip, thank you, um, to hang these um, on the, the little hooks. It's great. So that's Merry Christmas number one. Merry Christmas number two, the same front. Did you make these, Jen? I did not make these. A friend of mine who is a quilter made these, um, and she did a fabulous job, I think. Um, so this is Merry Christmas number two. This one has the holly backing, but the border is the snowy boughs that you saw on the London Christmas. So this is Merry Christmas number two, and there's only one of these. And then Merry Christmas number three. Don't lose my sticky note, otherwise I don't know which one's which. Okay, Merry Christmas number three. Same front, it's got the holly back, but the border is, I forget what I called it, but it's got the blue. It's like snowy boughs with blue, blue snowy boughs or something. I, I honestly can't remember what I called it, but it, it's the one with blue. And so that's Merry Christmas number three, and there are two of these in the shop, and that's it. Only eight total. Um, and so when they're sold, they're sold out. There's no, like, they're, 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 they're gone. <laughs> they are handmade, handmade with love by this beautiful friend of mine who does amazing quilting work. Um, same thing with the ones from last year. The ones from last year were handmade. Um, hand designed by my seamstress friend and uh, I think she both of them such good work um, the details are amazing and so these are the 2022 and like I said what's left of the 2021 quilted wall hangings are available in the shop and th those are discounted but these are not um, since they're new and that's it for those and so we're going to go back in the kitchen any other questions She's on the Mm-hmm. That's okay. I got shoe pastry or something on my finger. Question what? Was I said, did you want to put those up? Like yeah, that? I'm gonna put those in the oven. Pause for a second. I ended up getting six more puffs out of what was left in the bowl.
So I'm going to put those in for 10 minutes and we'll check them. But I might leave the oven at 400. Your oven is different than my oven. So that didn't work. Okay, so now we're moving into the tea portion. Turn on the kettle. And um, both, while the kettle is going, and before I show you the teas, I have a mea culpa. Dad knows. Dad's laughing because he knows what's coming. Okay, so I subscribe to Tea Time Magazine. And um, yes, this is a plug for this magazine if you enjoy this kind of thing. They have great recipes. Like I said, the roasted vegetable sandwich filling came out of a uh, previous issue from Tea Time Magazine. But I got the November-December issue this week, and I was reading six myths about caffeine and tea. And I thought, huh, okay, well, I'll read this. So what page is that? Page 17. And one of the myths was about um, decaffeinating your black tea. Well, I have to apologize because what we have been telling you is a myth that uh, we have been telling you that if you um, steep your black tea for 60 seconds and dump it, that that eliminates the majority of the caffeine in your tea. And it turns out that that is false. Um, so what's interesting is the guy uh, who wrote this article actually did a study doing exactly that. And what he actually found is that um, it takes a six minute steep to remove about 80% of the caffeine. Well, at that point, you don't want to re-steep those leaves like they've been steeped to death. You're, you don't want to drink that six minute steep of your black tea because it's going to be very bitter, like really, really bitter. And the whole point is you're trying to get rid of the caffeine. So the idea is you steep it and then you dump that first steep and then you re-steep your leaves. Well, that apparently actually does not work at all. And so I'm telling you, don't do that anymore. If you've been doing that, thinking that you're decaffeinating your tea, you're not. Um, so I am actually going to look into trying to carry more decaf teas, uh, black teas, for those of you who prefer a decaf black tea. Um, and they are out there. They're a little more expensive, um, and so the price point on that for you will be a little bit higher um, because of what they have to do to take the caffeine out of the tea. Um, but I did want to correct that myth that we have been perpetuating uh, for the last couple years. Um, the other thing that we've gotten wrong um, is the quantity of caffeine across black, green, and white tea. And we're talking about tea from the Camellia sinensis plant which is actually tea. Anything else is called a tisane. So rooibos and herbals, those are tisanes. Those are not tea. We just call them tea because they're steeped in hot water like tea leaves are. So when I'm talking about tea, I, I'm really talking about the Camellia sinensis plant, which is black tea, green tea, white tea. So it turns out that, depend, that the caffeine <coughs> Um, content in your tea across black to white depends on the variety of the tea. That you can have as much caffeine in a white tea as you do in a black tea. The processing is not what determines the, the caffeine content, it's the actual leaf that determines the caffeine. And there are differences between um, some varieties of Camellia sinensis and other varieties. So and where they're grown and, and all of that. So if you want to learn more about that, I recommend you look up the November, December 2022 Tea Time magazine and, uh, and you can read that very interesting article about caffeine and tea. Yeah, so there's that. Um, okay, so with that, let me show you, because I think the kettle, yes, I have hot water. Okay, usually I have mom to help me, so I'm gonna get everything here all ready to go. I'm going to use two pots and then I'm going to use one um, pincher, pincer infuser and then tea sacks. So let me show you the tea sacks before I start pouring water anywhere. Um, 
These are great. I'm going to be actually using the T-Sec number one, and I do carry these in the shop. If you've been watching our lives, I promo these every time because they're probably one of the best T-Tools out there. Um, the T-Sec number one, and so I'm going to demonstrate those. But I also um, have the size two, um, which is better for a mug, and the size three, which is great for a pot. All right. Um, and then I am going to demonstrate in the pots with the uh, strainers. I have the Empress strainer, and I do carry this in the shop. And then this cute little spoon type strainer. It's got the little cute little teapot. <clears throat> so I'm going to demonstrate those. And the pincer. Okay. So I'm going to show off the teas. And I will answer this question when I get to the infuser. Okay, so I already showed you the apple almond black. Oh, you smell that? Mmm, it smells so good. Uh, roasted almonds and apples, raisins and spices. Um, it is a fabulous tea. I have it right here. This one? How to get wet leaves out of the infuser? I might answer that in a second. Alright, so I'm actually going to do... No, I'll do this this is black tea, no one's going to drink it. I'll drink it. No one else is drinking the caffeine tonight. Alright, so do, to the, do the tea sack, I end up opening it up with my fingers. Are you laughing at me? Delayed? Not tonight, no. no. Alright, and I put a pretty healthy scoop. This is the perfect cup of teaspoon, which I carry in the shop, and um, we use ours every day. So because these are small little teacups, I'm just doing one scoop in the tea sack. And I'm going to pour the water over. Right in. Okay. Ooh, that's heavy. All right, I'm going to leave that there. So that is the apple almond three-minute timer. Start. Okay. Um, and then the other black that I'm going to show you is the Auntie's Pumpkin Pie. And these are fall teas that I'm showing you. But this is an all time favorite um, Auntie's Pumpkin Pie black tea. It's got pumpkin, cinnamon spices, and then the cute little pumpkin sprinkles. And I'm going to show that also in the tea sack because. I love the tea sacks. Okay, again, I opened it with my fingers, and then I'm going to do my healthy, perfect cup of teaspoon. I put it in, and then I turn it to unload. And then I do kind of give it a crease. Ugh, that's a heavy kettle. Pour the water over. Oof. Okay. So that's Auntie's Pumpkin Pie, almond, um, <coughs> and then um, two special ones that I brought with me tonight. Um, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you may have heard the news that the actor who played Hagrid died yesterday, sadly. Um, and so I actually brought um, my version of Mr. H's Mold Meat um, from the Harry Potter collection. I can't call it Harry Potter collection. The Wizard World collection that I did for um, uh, fans of that book and movie collection. So um, it's called Mold Mead. It's a fig peach um, flavor combination. This is an herbal. It's got cinnamon. It's got raisins, carrot pieces. Um, honey bush is the base. Um, and uh, it's got little pieces of popcorn in it. It's great. Actually, I'm going to do that in the pot. So I'm going to do this. This is the perfect pot of teaspoon. This spoon does three to four cups of tea. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab, see that pot, piece of popcorn? And I'm going to grab a piece of cinnamon. And here's a piece of fig. Throw that in there. Um, so that's Mr. H's mold mead. And we'll get the water over that. And this can steep for a while because it is an herbal. That'll do. 
Okay. All right, let me check that oven. I'm gonna give that five more minutes at 400 and then I'll check. Okay, and we're almost done on the oh, apple almond. So the apple almond right here is ready. And so I have the tea bag squeezer, which I carry in the shop. And this tool is indispensable if you use tea bags a lot because then you can squeeze all of the water, that tea, out of the bag. And you can see beautiful black tea. This one will be next. We'll give that one a few more seconds. And while we're waiting on that, um, actually we'll give that about 20 seconds. No. There we go. And well, that is timing out. And then the other special one that I brought tonight is um, Tickled Pink for the Cure, which is a nice rooibos uh, blend. Um, strawberry uh, flavor. It's got almond slices, uh, rose petals, and rose hips. Um, strawberry and cherry flavor. And then it's got the cute little pink ribbon sprinkles in it in honor of breast, ca breast cancer uh, patients and survivors. Um, I bring this out every October and 15% um, uh, of the proceeds from the sale of this particular tea goes to Breast Cancer Research, uh, the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate this again in the tea sack. So, one scoop in there. I'm going to fold that over and stick that there. But before I pour the water on that one, I'm going to squeeze this one because that's what that timer was for. This is Auntie's Pumpkin Pie. Boom. It smells good in here, y'all. Okay, so apple almond and Auntie's Pumpkin Pie are the two black teas. I'm going to pour the water over the tickled pink for the cure. And this is a rooibos, so it can go for about five minutes. I'm going to give it four. Um, and like I said, um, this is only available th for the month of October. Um, but it's a great tea. And, um, and if you buy it, it goes, the proceeds go for a good cause. Oops, I've been spilling water. This one? Okay. This one's the Mr. H's. Take a look at it. We'll let that sit for a few more seconds. Um, I've managed to spill water all over my stuff. Um, and then uh, the other new one that I want to show you that I'm going to do in this pincer infuser is a green tea. It is called uh, Caramel Apple Crumble. Ooh. I drank this today and it is fantastic. Tastes so good. It's um, caramelly and apple-y. It's got a hint of maple. Um, very good. Green tea. Green tea you only steep for a minute or two. I'm gonna give it two minutes. So in this pincer you only want to fill up one half this spoon fits that one half perfectly. I'm going to put that in the... Now, typically you're not doing that in a teacup like that. You're going to do it in a mug. You're going to use the pincer infuser in a mug. And I... And probably you can see all kinds of debris. So you want to be careful the type of tea in the pincer infuser. I'm sad that that's all squeezing through that. Um, so it's not going to be a pretty cup necessarily, but um, the pincer infuser is great for a mug. Recommend that maybe for an herbal or a black tea um, that doesn't have a lot of small particles to work better. Um, and so that's the caramel apple crumble, which is new. 
And so let's pour the hag, the hag, I still call it Hagrid's, it's Mr. H's. Now this has big chunks and so if you've got a small spout in your pot, it may be difficult to get it out. Yep, it's all clogged up. <laughs> so, but that's all right, We're, it's coming out. There we go. And that actually is a really nice color. It's got hibiscus in it too, I think, which helps bring out that pink. So that's the mold mead, Hagrid's, Mr. H's mold mead. I know, I struggle. And then I'll take this out for a green tea. And sadly, there's stuff in the bottom of that cup, but check this. Oh, these are doing better. Okay, so I turned the time, the, so that they were in for 15 minutes at 400 in my mom's oven, and I just checked them, and they're puffing up and turning brown, so I put five minutes, and I turned the heat down to 350, so we'll see how those turn out. Um, okay, so before I squeeze that one, we'll do the next pot, which is our last tea, and the last tea I'm showing you is maple leaf, which is a nice rooibos and it tastes just like it sounds. It's maple. Um, it's a rooibos honey bush blend and it's got maple flavor and then it's got cute little tiny candy leaves, sprinkles. Um, yes, I'm gonna get that. Yeah, my timer's getting ready to go. I just turned it off. I'm gonna do this in the pot as well. I'm doing a spoon, perfect pot of teaspoon with the rooibos. I had just enough water, I think, to do that. Perfect. Put my lid. Get my timer. Okay, now, if you recall, which one is this one? Tickle pink? I lost track. Yes. Yes, see, you can see the little candy the candy ribbon um, is in there. Tickle pink for the cure, which is a rooibos, so that's a nice red color. Looks just like it's supposed to as a rooibos. And um, that looks great. Okay, and so now we're just waiting on, okay, so apple almond, Auntie's pumpkin pie, caramel apple crumble, tickle pink, Mr. H's mold mead, and then this one will be the maple leaf when that comes out. So someone asked, what's the best way to remove wet tea leaves out of an infuser? Um, rinse it in your sink. So that's what I'm gonna have to do with this one. Um, you just keep rinsing and rinsing until, they, until it comes out. Um, uh, you can run it in the dishwasher, but you don't really need to run it through the dishwasher. You just need to rinse it out really well um, under the faucet at your sink to get the the tea out, the tea leaves out. Um, I don't know any other way to get get it out. <coughs> and I suppose if you if you did not have a garbage disposer, you could bang it out hard as you could. Yeah, you can, around. yeah, like bang it out into your trash can. If you, and, and when I say rinse it out at your sink, if you don't have a garbage disposal, um, put a bowl in your sink or at least stop up your sink um, to catch those leaves. Um, maybe, maybe a bowl. But I don't know any other way to get the tea leaves out of your infuser. You have to rinse it. There's no other way to get them out. So, I mean, you could swish it, like dump it out into your trash can and then swish it in a bowl of clean water to get most of the leaves out of there. That might work if you don't have a gar garbage disposal. Um, that's the only way I can think to get it out. The only way to do it is to rinse it some way. So, um, I think that's it. Oh, we're waiting on the maple leaf. We have a question. What made you interested in attending culinary school? Oh, wow. Do I go back that far? Okay, so um, I didn't even know that I liked to cook. I'll try to give you the short version. I've got a minute 
to stretch waiting on the maple leaf and we've got stuff in the in the oven so um, I didn't know that I was even interested in cooking until I moved out of my parents house after I graduated from college um, and so when I moved out and I started cooking for myself I realized oh, I, I actually I kind of like this and I'm pretty good at it so all those years of hanging out with my mom in the kitchen rubbed off um, I would watch her cook dinner at night I would just, I would stand there talking not even helping her really just wasting her time talking her ear off while she was busy cooking dinner for our family and um, and it just kind of rubbed off and here I'll take that and um, anyway I started watching cooking shows on PBS this is before Food Network uh, on cable um, PBS had amazing cooking shows I would watch Julia Child. I would watch um, like all the old famous chefs. Jacques Pepin. Jacques, I love Jacques Pepin. Uh, hold on, let me check the oven. Yes. These, I scooped these out of the bowl of the dough that was left that I was not able to get in the piping bag. And um, yeah, you can see the hole in the middle of that one. So they, they're not perfect, but these for sure did better than the previous batch. Now, if the recipe does say to let them cool on the sheet pan. And the reason why is they continue to cook on that pan. That pan stays hot for a while, and they continue to cook while they're on this pan. And that's true for anything. Read your recipe. If it says to remove from the pan immediately, the reason is they continue to cook while they're in or on the pan that they're in or on. And um, if it says your cake needs to cool completely in the pan, it cools completely in the pan. Like, follow the instructions of whatever recipe it is that you're working with. There's a reason why those instructions say what they say. Anyway, okay, so our tea is ready, and I'll try to talk while I'm doing this. So this is maple leaf. I'll take this one goes with the other tea question. Okay. Okay. Finish up culinary school. Yeah, so uh, anyway, so I, I would watch these cooking shows, and this is maple leaf, which is a rooibos, and um, that looks fabulous too. Okay, so culinary school. So I um, would start writing down these recipes that these chefs were cooking on their TV shows and trying them out myself, and they were turning out pretty good. And, um, and I was really inspired, and I thought, well, I can do this. And so, and I was working for a computer company at the time. I was a government contractor computer company, and I enjoyed my job, but I really, really loved cooking. And so I looked into a one-year program here locally, uh, well, not here, but in Northern Virginia locally, and um, talked with the company that I worked with, and they agreed that I could reduce my hours. Um, so I reduced to like three quarters time at my job and um, did school at night, so I would go to work at like 10 in the morning till 5 and then I would go straight from work over to school where I would be Monday through Friday from 6 to 10 and I usually get home at about midnight because um, class was from 6 to 10 but that that next hour from 10 to 11 was cleaning so every, all the stuff that we had made everything that we had dirtied up we had to put away the food whatever leftovers we weren't taking home or if, if it was a multi-stage project it would go in the cooler or whatever um, brought home a lot of leftovers so I was living in my parents basement while I was doing this and I brought home a lot of food and uh, dad's given thumbs up they enjoyed the fruits of our labors um, what's my one my one thing that I'm most proud of from culinary school was pie week 
Uh, I hate, I'm not really a fan of baking. I like to cook. I, I'm, my mom is the baker, my sister bakes. I'm, I don't love baking. I'm good at baking, but I don't love it. But it was pie week, and um, I brought home the perfect blueberry pie. Perfection. Beautiful, beautiful blueberry pies. And we had to make two of everything, and so I had these two blueberry pies, and um, I was, I've never been able to replicate that. The crust was perfect, the fruit inside was perfect, absolute perfection, like bakery quality blueberry pie, I've never been able to do it again. But, um, but that, that's how I ended up at culinary school. Now, I was only in culinary school for about a month when I decided, oh, I don't want to be a chef. This is a hard life. Being a chef is hard work, hard, hard work. Um, and it takes a lot of time to actually become a chef. Most of, the, most of the time you go to culinary school and you work on the line, um, it takes a lot of, of work and education and time to become a chef. And um, I decided that was not the life for me. I actually like working in an office. I like working Monday through Friday, nine to five, um, working nights, weekends, and holidays on my feet all day in a hot kitchen. Um, did not appeal to me and so that's why I'm not a chef and why I don't work in food service but I learned in that one year what it took my mom 30 years to learn um, and so I'm forever grateful for that experience and don't regret it one bit even the years and years of paying off that loan which I just finished paying off but I did pay it off um, don't regret the money or the time that was spent because um, I learned so much in that year. So, um, okay. Did you say the perfect mug spoon is equal to two cups? Uh, the perfect cup of, of teaspoon is perfect for a teacup, which is five to six ounces. If you want enough tea for a, an eight to ten ounce mug, you want two of these scoops. Um, the perfect pot of teaspoon does three to four teacups of tea, um, and that being a five ounce, five to six ounce cup. So this, this is gonna work. Uh, don't use this for a mug, because um, it's gonna be too much. And then, um, how long to steep? So black tea, we typically say three minutes for black tea. Although, was I talking to you and you mentioned the different times? Yeah, so Dad and I were talking, he read somewhere that, no? No, I had bought some black tea. Oh. And I steeped it for three minutes and it came out better. Oh. So I wound it back to two minutes and it was fine. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully you could hear him say that. He said he bought some tea, steeped it for three, it came out bitter, and so he backed it off to two and it came out fine. So it's to your taste, but generally speaking, on a black tea, three minutes... Green tea, no more than two minutes, but again, it's to your taste. If, it, if, it's, if you think it's bitter at the two minute mark, then back it off to one minute, 130, whatever, whatever it is that suits your palate. And then white tea, really one minute, and um, otherwise, otherwise it gets bitter. Um, rooibos and herbals can go much longer. They're very forgiving, they don't get bitter, it just gets stronger. Um, if you want a stronger black, green, or white tea, you add more tea. Don't steep it longer for stronger. For stronger, you add more tea, not time. And I think that's it. That's it. Um, giveaway, just a reminder on the giveaway, and Mom's going to see the flurry of comments. Uh, the apple almond black is the giveaway for tonight. Uh, three ounce tin. Yeah, come on around, Mom. Three ounce tin of apple almond is the giveaway and the key phrase is apple tin all one word apple tin in the comments if you've already put that then you don't need to do it again i'll find it and um yes our finished delights finished product yep the the roasted vegetable cream cheese tea sandwich filling chicken salad cream Lemon cream? Yeah, and this is the <coughs> chicken tarragon that is in my cookbook. For those of you who have the cookbook, that's that's in there. Page mm -hmm. two, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excuse me. Well, I, I know try. what hubby's going to have. It, the, the dessert <laughs> ones? Yeah. I'm going to eat one of those. Mm, me too. Um, okay, so our next live is November 
12th. Yes. Just a month. Um, and that is our virtual open house. And so come ready to shop. Mm -hmm. Mom and I are going to have everything to show you. Yeah. And I, well, it depends on how much stuff we're going to show you. I may not demonstrate any tea. And we won't have a baking demo. No. Typically with our virtual mm -hmm. open house, there's no baking demo. I'll probably show a couple teas. Yeah, um, I, I would. Um, but we will have a lot of things to show you. You know what? I can preview some holiday teas. There you go. Because by the time of the virtual open house, the holiday, all of the rest of the holiday teas will be listed. Yeah. I think most of them are listed. But anything yeah. that's not listed yet will be there. And again, the 12 Days of Christmas box will be listed um, yeah, I would say ship. definitely do a preview of some of the holiday teas. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, A promo, rather. A promo of yeah. the holiday, or like a little preview of holiday yeah. teas. And then our December live, and we are going to do one in December as well, is December 10th. And it'll be more holiday teas. It's on my calendar. <laughs> we may it's have not on his It's calendar. not on his calendar. <laughs> December 10th, we'll do some holiday teas and a cookie. A holiday cookie demo. Yeah, and we haven't figured out what cookie. We, we haven't figured yet. out the cookie we'll, yet, but we'll it'll be a good that. one. Yeah. And then, um, uh, if you're in the group, you know already we've moved a lot of our previous Facebook Live videos over to YouTube. We have a new YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Just do a search T for All Reasons. You'll see it. Our logo and several of the previous, the old Facebook Lives are up at our YouTube channel. This one will be posted there, if not tomorrow, then Monday. Um, and um, I didn't do all of them. Um, I did the ones that had a baking demo and your flower arrangement. Oh, good. Um, because I thought those were the ones that people would most be interested in watching. Right. Right. Um, even though the others might have tea demonstrated, um, they were mostly to show wares, and I didn't think people necessarily, like our no. old virtual ha open houses, I didn't think no, people would want to watch those that. those things aren't available anymore. Right, exactly. Yeah. But anything that had a baking demo that mm -hmm. I was able to download is uploaded to our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, so you can, you can watch those anytime. Okay. And subscribe. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll get a notification when a new video pops up. Um, you won't get spammed from us. Um, YouTube might spam you, but um, but we we will own you will only get a notification when we post new content, which is only this at this point right, is our right. Facebook Live. Right. So I am looking into how to do our live through YouTube um, instead of Facebook or figuring, but it takes third party software, and I'm not ready to do that yet. Right. And as long as we can make it available both places, I think it's going to make everybody happy. Yeah. We'll be able to make everybody happy. Yeah. So eventually the Facebook Lives will be expired on Facebook and only available at YouTube. And so that's why I recommend you subscribe um, because if you do like to go back and watch our live videos on Facebook, you're not going to be able to because they won't be available on the page anymore. Yeah. Um, but... Like normal, I will post the link to this in the group tomorrow, and um, but I do actually have to upload the video to YouTube. Yeah, and we'll get the recipes onto Food for All Reasons Recipe. for you as well. Yep. And you know something else I just wanted to mention: um, tell your friends because um, there are a lot of folks out there who really are not don't know anything about Tea for All Reasons uh, and what we're doing and. Um, some of the folks that I've talked with say, well, gosh, I, I wish I had known. And so do tell your friends. Tell them where they can find us. Mm -hmm. And um, we'd love to have new likes and new followers. And yep, especially absolutely. Especially on the Facebook Live yep. programs. Yep, absolutely. Say, say the magic word one more time. Appleton. Appleton. Appleton is the giveaway keyword. Yeah. Right. And uh, like I said, I'll after church tomorrow, I will go through all of the comments and look for all of your apple tins uh, so that Molly and I can do the drawing mm -hmm. in the, sometime in the afternoon usually 2 3 o'clock is yeah. when, when I I'll post a video of Molly doing the drawing out of the, uh, the, the, tea, mug. the, mug, the mug the yeah. tea for all reasons mug yeah um, okay so if you want to shop it's tea for all reasons .com for me tea if you want the table topper or any other china vintage, whatever mom has in her shop, that's vintageforallreasons.etsy.com. Right. 
because she's at Etsy. And I think that's, that's it. it. Okay. It's been a long program. Thank oh you for goodness. hanging in with us. Oh, two hours. I know. Bless you. Yeah, bless you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And have a blessed day tomorrow. Have a good rest. Yeah. We intend to. I will be happy resting. anniversary. And happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so we'll see you on November 12th, 12th. for the next time. Okay. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.